there. How is everyone doing today? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some English terms, vocabulary words we use when talking about books and reading. I hope that uh, my voice holds up. I have been just a little bit sick over the last couple days. In fact, last night, I lost my voice. So hopefully that won't happen today. The idea is that we are going to talk about books and reading. And if you've joined here before, I have slides. Sometimes I have sentences you can practice shadowing with. My name is Brent. This is Speak English with this guy. And before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about something that happened earlier this morning. I need to give a huge shout out to Amina. She left a rather large super chat down there. She said that she would be working today or she said she's busy. I think she might be working or shopping, but she left that and said she will watch on replay. So Amina, I could not start without thanking you. And uh, I got a little something for you right there. Here we go. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, small channel like me. It's always nice to see that. And Amina has been has been awesome. So thank you so much, Amina. I have a lesson requested by Amina coming out soon. I just need to film it. It's about criticism. So we'll do that. And I also would like to say hello to a couple people in the chat. Harry. How are you? I think I saw oh, Maria's here. How are you from Argentina? Chile is in the house. Welcome. Fayez is back. Good to see you. Good to see you. I think I saw Audie here from Thailand. Apple the Frog might be from Thailand too. So if you have never been here before, if you look at the bottom, the chat should be small enough that you can leave your questions just right in the chat and I will do my best to answer them. Any questions you have about books and reading, what we talk about in English, should be all right. Oh, Freddie Wolf's here too. Look at that. Oh, Freddie Wolf. It's about 22 degrees here Fahrenheit, negative two Celsius. So a little cold, but just in case, somebody doesn't know where you're from, would you mind putting in which country you are from? It's always interesting to see what countries are represented. Brazil is often pretty popular. Uh, Russia is usually pretty popular. Poland, Ukraine, Korea, France, US, Canada. I'm trying to think of the top, top 10 countries. So but there's, um, there was somebody from uh, Uzbekistan last week. So please put in uh, what country you're from. I'd love to read those um, countries. And maybe you will find somebody who is from your country as well. What? Oh, yeah. Members. Thank you, channel members. If you are a member for like a month or two months, you get little discs and they change color. My favorite is the yellow one. I think that's for like two months or something like that. But then it, it turns to like purple. Oh my goodness. We have another super chat. Layla, Layla, thank you so much. Go a little something for you. Where is it? Here we go. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, it, do, it does mean a lot. And I know that Times are tough for some people, you know, money, we've stopped going out to eat just because like, eh, we can save a little money. It means so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know that, and you do not have to do this. Um, liking videos really supports me. Becoming a channel member supports me. Just watching the videos really supports the channel. Uh, but the super stickers are like just bonus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. That's awesome. India India is very popular too. And of course, Chile. Chile's in the house. China? How's that? 
I think I've I've talked to you before, Henry. I think a VPN is used. I should do an English lesson on technology, and we can talk about VPNs. It hides your location. So, and and also you can get Bulgaria. Bulgaria's in the house. I was just looking at uh, right back there is a book. You can't see it, but it's um, on learning Bulgarian. And this week in my English class, um, we were, were learning about the Balkans. So Bulgaria came up a little bit. Um, the country known for inventing the Cyrillic language. So Bulgaria, Sofia, I would love to visit Sofia one day. All right, but you are here for an English lesson on books and reading, but it's a, look, India is definitely in the house. All right. So let's talk about some books and reading. And like I said, if you have any questions, just leave it in the chat. I am going to get rid of that banner because it can be a little distracting. Let's do the first one. It's books. Now, come on. I know that if you're watching this channel, you're probably an intermediate English speaker or at least an intermediate English listener. You know books. You know books. I have a couple books here. I will be using them as examples. Nobody has any questions about books, right? Now, we do have a part of the book that you might not know and that is called the cover, the cover of the book. And I have a little sentence here for you. The cover protects the pages of the book. And there are two types of covers. And we'll talk about those two types in a minute. I did not put pages as one of the slides because I thought you might know the pages, but just in case you didn't know what pages of a book were, that's what you turn when you read a book. Now let's talk about the two different types of covers for a book. And remember, the cover protects the pages. We have paperback books. And paperback books are usually less expensive then hardcover books. We'll talk about hardcover books in just a second. But this is a paperback book. You can bend it. Let's see right there. Bend it. It's softer. And like I said, it's less expensive. It just doesn't last as long. There's usually more wear and tear on the book if it's a paperback book, which is probably why they're a little cheaper. The next one is a hardcover book. You can see in the picture there, I just dropped my book. You can see in the picture there, all of those are hardcover books. And look at this, this one, it's a hardcover book. When you knock on it, it makes that sound. So hardcover book, they're usually more expensive but they usually last longer. So we have uh, learning Portuguese, by the way. I'm learning Italian right now. One day, hopefully Portuguese. But you can see, we might call this a little more flimsy. If it can be bent like this, we might say it is flimsy. And the hardcover book, we might say is more rigid. Hard to bend. Can't really bend a hardcover book. Well, let me check the chat, see if there are any questions on covers. We don't, Fayez, we don't say stiff cover. We wouldn't say that, but we might say that this is a soft cover book, but we wouldn't say stiff cover. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at this. We do have a saying in English called don't judge a book 
by its cover. That means when you look at a person, try not to judge the inside of them. Try not to judge what their heart is on the inside. Maybe they don't have on the nicest clothes. Maybe they aren't dressed in the best way. But that doesn't mean they're a, a bad person. They might be a very nice person. And the opposite might be true. Somebody who's dressed really nice, drives a really nice car on the inside, they might be a horrible person. So the outside appearance of a person doesn't always match what's on the inside. Oh, paperback writer. Yeah, nicely done. Paperback writer. Yeah. It's a story of a dirty man and his cleaning, clinging wife doesn't understand something like that. But yeah, it's all about a man who wants to be a paperback writer. Nice job. The chat, I always like looking at the chat because there are so many good questions in there. Yeah, flimsy, flexible, they're almost the same. Sometimes when we say flimsy, it might also mean cheap. Like, don't pay for something that's flimsy because it might break. So flexible has a little better connotation. But um, if this book was like really old and falling apart, we could also call it kind of flimsy. Um, let's see, what else could we call flimsy? Oh, a tablecloth. A tablecloth. What you put on a table to protect it. If it's flimsy, it might tear. So they are almost the same. Almost the same. Good question. Flimsy can also be used. It's not plausible excuses. If something is plausible, it's believable. So if something isn't believable, yeah, we could say it's flimsy. The argument is flimsy. It doesn't hold up. All right. Nicely done. Nicely done. That's a good question. I'm not sure. What's the name of the material on a hardcover and a flimsy book? Hmm. That's a good question. I've never, now we would simply call this, you know, paper, thick paper, maybe. But geez, I don't know what we would call this because it's thicker than cardboard. I don't know. It's a good question, Freddie. Sometimes when you don't know, yeah, it's just, you know, the stuff that uh, hardcover books are made out of, like the cover, that stuff. Sometimes you can just say stuff. That's probably what I would do. I've never thought about it. It's not super thick paper. You wouldn't say that. I don't know if anybody knows in the comments better than I do. I've, I've never had to uh, explain what a hardcover book is made out of. Good question, Freddie. All right. Hey, Brent, an ancient book is more valuable than flimsy. Yeah, if you put it like that, an ancient book, it means it's old, but also it might be worth some money. If the book is flimsy, I mean, I like books that are flimsy. And you can put them in your pocket maybe, stick them in your bag. You don't care if they get a little torn. If anybody is a book reader in here like I am, you might like it when the covers of your books and the pages of your books are a little worn. We're going to talk about dog-eared in a minute. I think that's a new term for some people. But when a book is old and it looks like it's been read many times, I like that. I like that. All right, the next one here, hardcover, spine. The spine of a book. I'm not sure if you've ever had to wonder what this part of the book is, but we call this the spine. And usually when you go into a bookstore, the spine will be displayed. If it's a, we'll talk about bestseller in a little bit. The cover might be displayed if it's a really popular book, but because bookstores don't have as much space, they might display the spine. 
here's a sentence with spine. I try not to crack the spine of my new books. Is, is there a typo in there? I went over these and there is a typo in there. Uh, I'm trying to type with one hand. That's better. I try not to crack the spine of my new books. When they get a little older and you open them up a little too much. Yeah, this one's not cracking. Sometimes they crack. I try not to crack the spine of my books. Spine. Just in case you don't know what that word is, here's another picture. And we might say that those books, they look a little ancient right there. They look a little old. They look a little weathered. That's another term you could use for something that is old. Weathered. Weathered. Those books look a little weathered. The next one. When a book does really well, it might make it on the New York Times bestseller list. And the New York Times is a famous newspaper in the United States. The New York Times is a famous newspaper in the United States. So if you are looking for something good to read and you're in the United States, you might look at the New York Times best sellers list because on there you will find the most popular books for that week. The books that have sold the most copies in the United States for that week. Here's another sentence. Most authors would love to have their books on the New York Times bestseller list. New York Times bestseller. One of the biggest newspapers in the United States. And right now, they have this game called Wordle. The New York Times puts out this game called Wordle. I know Anya knows Wordle. And it's um, where they give you a five-letter word and they give you six guesses to guess that word. And of course, all of the words are in English. I can write that in the chat if anybody wants to look it up. And if Anya is still here, she might want to um, talk a little bit about Wordle. And Jamie, my wife, is in the chat. She also plays Wordle, but it's spelled like this, Wordle. And so many people in the United States are playing Wordle. Every morning, they will give you a new word, and then people try to get it as quickly as they can. Today, I did not get it. It took me all six tries and I did not get it. And my wife, Jamie, texted me. She got it in four tries. So she did really well. Yeah. Um, Natalia, the spine, people have spines. So it, it, it's that long thing of bone running down the middle of our back. We call it a spine in English, just like the spine of a book. It's a good question. Yes, that's where it comes from. Our bodies. Look at that. Nicole says, I'm glad to hear it. Bulgaria is an interesting language. Oh, Bulgarian is an interesting language and a beautiful place. Yeah, I would love to visit Bulgaria in the summer one of the beautiful beaches on the Black Sea. That's on my bucket list. It's on my bucket list. My favorite book of all time is a book by Stephen King called The Stand. Yep. I read it when I was 16 years old and it just blew my mind. So it's an older book. It was written in the 1970s and it has been made into a few movies, but, <coughs> excuse me, but The Stand. One of my favorites. Yeah, Danny from France. Old books, sometimes covered in leather, right? And if they are covered in leather, if you don't know what leather is, think of like a, a football. It's probably fake leather, but it's that sort of material. 
sometimes purses are made out of leather or fake leather. Yeah, if a book is covered in leather, it's probably going to be expensive. Apple. Apple the frog. Do you know Wordle? Do you know Wordle? Okay. Anya is always so helpful. If you are interested, find the word on the internet side of it, the New York, New York Times. Okay. And sometimes we shorten it to NYT, just like on the slide, New York Times, NYT. Yeah. Don't feel badly if you don't get the word. Some of the words are common for Wordle today. I think it was a pretty rare word. I did not know the meaning of the word. Yeah, I don't want to say too much just in case Anya hasn't played or somebody is wants to find that English lover has heard about Wordle. Okay, Harry, have you ever used that device machine on the bestseller picture? Yeah, we call that a typewriter. That's what we call it. Let me get rid of that so you can see it. Yeah, oh, let me get rid of that so you can see it. Uh, yeah, right at the bottom, that machine is a typewriter. And yes, I am old enough that I have used a typewriter before. I haven't used it in a very long time though. But yeah, have you ever used a typewriter? Are you as old as I am? The next one, cover to cover. This is what we say when a book is really good. You can say, I read that book cover to cover. So when we talk about the cover, you can also say like, this, this is a good book too, by the way, Swing by Kwame Alexander. It's written in a sort of uh, poetry form. So if you, if you are looking for a book in English to read, this one might be pretty good. It's not too difficult. It's written for teenagers, so it's not too difficult. But we might call this the front cover, and we might call this the back cover. That thing we call, we call that the barcode. So when you go to buy a book, the cashier will scan the barcode that's the verb we use. They will scan the barcode so you can pay for it. But when a book is really good, you can say, I read that book cover to cover, cover to cover from the front cover to the back cover. We say that quite a bit. And here is a sentence with cover to cover. The book was so good that I read it cover to cover. The book was so good that I read it cover to cover. All right. Any questions on cover to cover or Wordle or New York Times bestseller or Spine? Hey, look, I'll leave that sentence up there just in case you want to practice. The book was so good that I read it cover to cover. We kind of hit that T on it. The book was so good that I read it cover to cover, cover to cover, cover to cover. You see the cover to cover? I'm not saying to cover to cover. I'm saying to cover to cover, cover to cover. Hopefully that helps. My friend from Italy is here. How are you? Yeah, you might say that. Um, no, I wouldn't say we read it in a row. No, I wouldn't say that. I do have one other saying. If a book is really good, I think it's the next one. No way, Audi. Typewriter salesman. Interesting. Is that true? Interesting. Um, Audi is a gold member. So this week we have been chatting on something we call Volley. It's been, it's been good to get to know Audi a little bit better. He has a very nice house. The Green Mile. It's up in my bookshelf. We'll talk about bookshelf in a minute. 
but that is one of my favorite ones and i have been trying to read it in italian it's still very difficult for me but in italian it's called um il milio il milio verde that's what they call it but i do have another stephen king book right over there in italian la lunga marcia the long walk that's a good one by stephen king too stephen king is my favorite author well, look at this. The book was so good that I couldn't put it down. Stay tuned for that one. I think I have that coming up. The next one, if a book is really good, Fatima, no, don't worry. It's okay. There's always the replay. If you're watching on replay, welcome, by the way, if you're watching us in the future. Okay, I'm Turkey. Got to say hi real quick. Hope you're doing well, my friend. So if a book is really good, we can call it a page turner. So when you're reading a book, you know, let's pretend we're reading this book. I'm going to turn the page here. Turn the page. Can I do it? Yeah. That's turning the page. I think I turned a couple pages at a time. Usually when you're really reading the book, you'll just turn one page at a time. But if it's a really good book, you could call it a page turner. If your friend asks you, hey, was that a good book? Oh, it was so good. It was a page turner. I couldn't put it down. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I couldn't put it down. Hopefully you can't hear that, but somebody is running the trash compactor right above me. This is live in case anybody wanted to know. If a book is really good, you can call it a page turner. You can call it a page turner. And it looks like that woman likes that book right there. Page turner. We might have talked about this already. If it's really good, you can say, I couldn't put it down. Here's a sentence for you. I couldn't put the book down because it was so good. So three ways to talk about a book being good. You read it cover to cover, which means you read it really well. It was a page turner. And I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. How about this one? Um, I am just thinking of this one right now. Also say this, and I'll put this in the chat. I read it in one sitting. I read it in one sitting. That means when you started reading, you couldn't stop. Like you never stopped reading it. I read it in one sitting. So when you sat down, you just kept reading. Oh, I don't. Layla, I don't think I have bookworm. Thank you, Layla. And again, thank you for the super chat. Um, yeah, a bookworm is someone who really loves books. So if you love reading, even if it's an ebook, we'll talk about ebooks in a minute. Um, it, it still counts. And if you love reading, you buy book after book, you read them from cover to cover, you can call yourself a bookworm. That was on my list at one time. I think I just forgot about it because that's a good one. Thank you. That's why I love doing these live lessons because people will often remember things I forget or things I never thought of. Yes, Wordle, it's addicting. If something is addicting, you can't stop doing it. Oftentimes, we use addicting in a bad way. Oh, that person is addicted to drugs. That person is addicted to video games. But the good thing about Wordle is there's only one word a day. It might be the first thing you do when you wake up is you play Wordle 
and you try to beat your friends or beat your husband or beat your wife. But yeah, Wordle is a good game. No, I didn't want to do a book ranking, but if you have a book that you have read in English and you think somebody else would like it, please put it in the chat. That's what the chat is for. Apple the Frog. We wouldn't say that. You could say, I read it page to page, but I think when you're talking to a native English speaker, they might not know exactly what you're saying. Cover to cover, no doubt. That was a good book. I read it cover to cover. There you go, Nicole. The Green Mile, so amazing that I couldn't put it down. I think next week we're going to do movie terms in English, but The Green Mile is one of those books that actually has a good movie that goes along with it. Hollywood made The Green Mile into a movie, and it's really good, in my opinion. Mm. All right. Educational fan says, I don't usually peruse the books. Instead, I'm interested in flicking through it so I can smell the fragrance of new books. Isn't that a great smell? New books have a great smell. Old books have a great smell. What a silly thing to do. I do frequently. Um, you know, and there's another term you could say, if you didn't really read the book, you could say, I thumbed through it. I thumbed through it. Let's see. Put that in the chat there so you can see how it's spelled. Easier said than done. You're taking too much time. Thumbed through it. Not easy to say either. Not easy to type. I thumbed through it. I thumbed through it. So if you don't actually read the book, maybe you thought it was boring. Maybe you had to read it for a class. You didn't really want to read it cover to cover, you could say, yeah, I, I, I thumbed through it. Not easy to say. My goodness. You could practice a little shadowing there. I thumbed through it. Whew. Be careful. I thumbed through it. Yeah. Sometimes when you speak in English, maybe in your language too, you have to worry about the spit coming out of your mouth. I thumbed through it. Be careful. Don't say that sentence close to anyone else's face. I thumbed through it. Sam, the Taiwanese has made an appearance. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, I'm Japanese. What's going on? Green Mile is really popular in my country. What's my favorite Stephen King novel earlier? I said The Stand. I also like The Long Walk. The Green Mile is really good. And he wrote one recently called Under the Dome, which is actually really good. Might be five or six years old. Really good. Really good. All right. I couldn't put it down. The next one. This is very difficult to say. In my opinion, genre, genre. I had a teacher in the seventh grade and she pronounced this the wrong way all the time. So it took me a little while to pronounce it correctly, but I promise the correct way to say that word is genre, genre, probably French. And what genre is, is that it's the type of book. So the next couple slides 
we'll talk about the types of books we have, the types of categories we have for books. So when you go into a bookstore or you are searching through Amazon for a book, they're often divided into categories and we call those categories genres, genres, different types of books or categories of books are called genres, genres. Hope that helps. And the first type of book we are going to talk about is a thriller, a thriller. And if you look at those pictures, that'll give you a good idea. We are going to talk about horror in a minute. Sometimes these two things can be very similar. Excuse me, but a thriller is going to get your heart racing. If you've ever seen the movie, A Quiet Place, I think that is a perfect example of a thriller. A lot of Stephen King books are thrillers. There are also some of them horror too. We'll talk about horror in a minute. But thriller makes your heart beat faster. You might get a little sweaty while you're reading it because you are so worried about what is going to happen next. If you've ever seen the series called Jack Reacher in English, um, that's a, a thriller. Lots of action, fast pace. Um, I'm trying to think of a really popular movie that's not Stephen King. Um, Stranger Things would probably be called a thriller. It's a little bit of a horror too, but we'll talk about horror in a minute. But if and I've talked about Stranger Things on the channel before, so if anybody has seen that television series on Netflix, it's a thriller. One thing that thrillers often have at the end is a plot twist. And that might be a new English word for you. Books that are considered thrillers often have a plot twist. So towards the end of the book, you will be surprised by something. You didn't see it coming. Maybe if there was a crime committed in the book and the whole time you thought it was one character and it turned out to be another character, that's a plot twist. When the reader is surprised by something, we call that a plot twist. I don't want to talk about any plot twists in here because it would be a spoiler. I don't want to spoil the ending of any books that you might not have read. Plot twist. I hope that makes sense. Thrillers often have plot twists. Spooky. When we get to horror, spooky is a good adjective to describe that. What's that? What's that? I can't recall pronouncing the word. Thank you, Brent. Yes, Alex. Absolutely. Natalia, styles, genres. Yes. Style of book, genre. Yep. That works. When we talk about style and books, you can also talk about the author's writing style. So the author is the person who writes the book. You could call them a writer. You might call them an author. And some have a certain writing style. The way they write, we might call that writing style. Oh, Carrie. It's a good one. His first book. And I think my daughter has read Carrie like three times. Yep. It takes place in Maine. It takes place in the state that I live in. And the town that I grew up in is mentioned in Cary. 
So one of the high schools has like better lockers than the one Carrie goes to. Is that a, is that a question for me? Do you know which country is the first word of bookworm? Like ketchup comes from the Chinese language. No, I didn't know that. Like ketchup. Hmm. Bookworm. I don't know why we call people bookworms. I guess because they crawl through the books as they read, you know, they read them so much, but that's what we call it. A bookworm. Oh, is there a book that has made me cry a lot? Well, with Stephen King, there is a book that made me cry. It's called 112263. I cried a little bit at that book. And then there was a book written by John Green called The Fault in Our Stars. It's about um, two teenagers who have cancer. And there was a part that uh, I had to stop reading. I actually had to put the book down to keep from crying. Yeah. So those are two that I could think of off the top of my head. Okay. No planning off the top of my head. Really? Genre. In English, it's the same as it is in French. All right. Looking through the chat here. Manual, it's no problem if you're late. Welcome, welcome. All right, I see a couple, couple questions. Oops, a couple questions here about cliffhangers. So in English, let's talk about what a cliffhanger is. Great question. Yeah, we might have that with books as well. And sometimes when we are reading a book in class, we read each day. In my class, I try to find a cliffhanger to, to stop at. So a cliffhanger, <coughs> excuse me, is used in television shows. It could be used at the end of a movie that is going to have a sequel. I didn't even use sequel. There's so many terms for books. Maybe I'll, I'll use that for the movie lesson next week. But a cliffhanger is a place that stops but makes you want to read more. Television shows right before an ad will use a cliffhanger. Some movies will use a cliffhanger to make you watch the sequel. For instance, Spider-Man. There are three Spider-Man movies starring Tom Holland. There was the first one and it has two sequels. A sequel is a book or a movie that comes after the first one. So hope that helps. And sometimes they end on a cliffhanger. Makes you want to read more. Makes you want to watch more. All right, the next one here. More genres to talk about. Romance. I have a feeling everyone knows what a book is if it is considered a romance probably lots of love maybe some kissing maybe some other stuff but that's what we call it romance romance i know if there are any italian speakers here um the just the type of or novel we'll talk about novel in a minute but it's almost like um, novel in, in Italian. But we have one genre we use for romance, and that is the one with a lot of love in it. If it's a movie, I need to write this down. I don't have a pen. We might call it a chick flick. I'll have to remember that. A chick flick. Those are romantic comedies. When we talk about movies, a chick flick. I'll have to remember that for next week. And another genre is horror. So yes, spooky. In the United States, we celebrate Halloween. And there are so many movies that come out in October, which is when we celebrate Halloween, that are horror movies. 
ghosts might be in there. You see that that person with the mask right there? That face? I mean, that is a horror movie right there since we have the visuals. But a lot of Stephen King's books are considered horror. They have um, people dying in a horrible way. Horror books will keep you up at night. They might give you nightmares. Oh, I did have a sentence for romance. It's it's so easy, right? Books that fall in the romance into the romance genre have guess what? Love. Books that fall into the romance genre have guess what? I'm sure you know. So horror Horror books are usually pretty scary and they might give you nightmares. Nightmares keep you up at night. Nightmares. Hey, Aroni, how are you? Oh, Apple the Frog is going to have nightmares because of the horror. Let me make it big one last time. Then we'll get rid of it and talk about biography. Sorry, Apple. Apple the Frog is going to stay up late tonight because of the slide. That is a freaky mask. I I hope it's a mask. I hope that is not anybody's face. Mega, how are you? Welcome. See, that's the good thing about French, Italian, Spanish, and English. If that is your native language, Portuguese, you will find a lot of words in English that are similar. I'm sorry to our Thai and Japanese and Arabic friends. There just aren't as many words that we share. Might be a little, little bit harder. All right. um, What's the difference between, I guess, romance and romantic? So romantic would be the adjective form romance would probably be the noun form you know they are having a romance they are feeling romantic so just a just a little difference in the suffix at the end it just changes the part of speech good to know good hey good to know for when i start studying portuguese yeah i need a couple more years with italian that's for sure but Yeah, English lover, great question. Is thriller and suspense the same? Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Now, there are a lot of movies and books that will fall into a couple different genres. Like a horror movie will have some elements of a thriller. But yeah, I think thriller and suspense probably interchangeable yeah probably interchangeable there all right the next one the slide is gone the slide that will give apple nightmares is gone so now we have biography the reason i wanted to do this i'm sorry there are just all old guys i tried to find a free picture of a woman And there weren't any free pictures of women who might have biographies. So I had to use only men. So, um, but in my classroom, Michelle Obama, there is a biography of her in my classroom. One of my students bought it last year and donated it to the classroom library. Library. That is not one of our words. I thought you might know that already. But a library is where you can go and borrow books for free. As long as you have a library card, you can go to the library, borrow a book for free, probably bring it back in about two weeks and you won't have to pay any money. Now, biography. This is going to let me teach you two words or two word parts. One is bio. So anytime you see bio in English, think of life. 
Okay. And the next one, no, no, not that next one. This next one. This next one is graph. So anytime you see graph in English, think writing. Probably something to do with writing. So a biography is a book written about somebody's life. You can see we have um, pictures of three old guys there. But you can write a biography about pretty much anybody. It helps if they're famous. It will probably sell better if they're famous. And if a person writes a biography about themselves, we call it an autobiography. Autobiography is a biography written by that person. One of my favorite bands is Guns N' Roses. And I have read biographies on the guitar player Slash and the bass player Duff. So they wrote books about their own life. Slash and Duff. Yeah. I don't think Axel has an autobiography. Somebody might have written a biography about him. I haven't read it though. So any questions on biography? Or, get rid of that. Horror, romance, thriller, any of those genres. We have one more genre. Just check in the chat to see if there are any questions. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of biographies. Yeah. I read a lot about like rock musicians. One of the last books I read was about the Who guitarist, a guitarist for the English band The Who. His name is Pete Townsend. I read that a little while ago. Yeah, let's see. Who who are these guys? We got we got William Shakespeare for sure. We have Napoleon. I can't remember the other guy I picked. I don't know. If anybody knows, let us know in the chat. I forgot. Yes. Autobiography is written by himself. Yes. They wrote their book. Look at this. I was thinking, I oh, you're reading a, a book a biography on Elon Musk? That man is fascinating. Elon Musk. He is almost like a computer that walks and talks. Fascinating guy. If you do not know who Elon Musk is, he is the owner of Tesla and SpaceX. So fascinating man. All right, English lover. I'm glad you put that there. So an autograph is a person or it's something that somebody writes themselves. Auto means by itself. So like an automobile moves by itself. You just have to push the pedal and then it goes. So autograph means the person wrote it themselves. Autograph. Famous people sometimes might give their autograph. Uh, what books are you reading now? Yeah, please, anybody answer that in the chat. Oh, that profile picture. That's scary. Sardor, the book I'm reading right now, it's, it's Italian books. I'm trying to get better at Italian. So I have been reading Italian books for a long time. Um, the one I'm reading now is just a series of very, very short stories, like one or two pages, sort of easy. So yeah, that's a good one. Reading is an exercise to the mind. For sure. For sure. I did not pick editor as one of our terms, but let's talk about editor. So when a person writes a book, they are the author. We talked about authors a minute ago. Somebody 
who looks over their work to make sure there are no mistakes would be the editor. Did you hear that look over phrasal verb there? Someone who looks over an author's work to make sure there are no mistakes is an editor, is an editor. All right, Alex says, educated by Tara Westover. Write it down. Maybe that's a good book. All right, English lover. I did not talk about fiction and nonfiction, but I can. So when a book is fake, when an author creates the story, it's fiction, okay? The way I remember it, fiction, fake, not real. If something is nonfiction, it's not fake. It's true. So nonfiction books are real. Biographies, autobiographies, those are nonfiction. They're real. Books that Stephen King writes where he creates characters, that's fiction. It's fake. Oh, proofreader, editor. A proofreader is probably not as important as an editor. An editor would get paid to look over an author's work. Proofreader, not as formal. It might be somebody's friend. Like, hey, can you look this over? You might call them a proofreader. <laughs> Bromance. Uh, bromance is, uh, has nothing to do with books, I don't think. But a bromance, just like our romance here. So we are talking a, a little bit about love. But a bromance is when two guys really get along well with each other. Bromance. That's funny. No way. The long walk. I love it. And I know... Aroni has read it. Oh. Tre piani. Was that three three rooms? Is that what that is? Three rooms. I think so. I thought it was three sandwiches for a second, but I think it's three rooms. What is lettering, Mr. Brent? Natalia, I'm not sure. Lettering? That doesn't uh that doesn't ring any bells. Lettering. I don't know. Uh, oh, I forgot. It's pretty late in Asia now. Apple the frog. I'm sorry. That picture is not letting you sleep. You're going to have nightmares. Your grandmother is going to be mad. Don't look at that picture. Don't look at that picture. I, I think this is the, yeah, this is the last genre we'll talk about, but it's fantasy fantasy so fantasy novels that's a new word it's in caps fantasy novels usually have things that aren't real another typo that aren't real like magic spells and unicorns let me fix that typo work typo is gone fantasy novels usually have things that aren't real like magic spells and unicorns you see that horse there with one horn we call it a unicorn in english uni means one in english and a novel is a book of fiction so if you ever see that word novel in English, it's a work of fiction. It is fake. An author created it. Novels are books that are fake. Biographies are not novels. Hope that helps there. Hope that helps. 
Manuel, hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Let's see. How is it called? A person who writes something about the author on one page before the, the start of the book? <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is holding up a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, we might say that that is the dedication. I'm not sure if this book has it. Sometimes before the book starts. Yeah, this one does. We might call it the dedication page. I'm not sure if I can read that. To the beautiful ones unborn and to their forgotten histories. It seems like it might be a little political. <laughs> I don't want to get political here. Um, but that would be the dedication page. So when an author writes a book, before the book starts, they might take a page and dedicate the book to somebody. It could be in memory of a person, like maybe a person's mother passed away and they want to dedicate that book to them. They wrote this book for them to remember them. Could be to a friend that helped them in some way. Dedication. Good question. Hope that helps. Dedication page. I don't know. Apple. I will do my best. I will do my best. It's late. It's late over you're from Thailand, right? Apple. I think Thailand. All right, the next one, fantasy. We got chapters. We have chapters. So books are divided into chapters because not everyone has the time to read a book in one sitting. The book is divided into chapters. Books are often divided into smaller chunks. We call those chunks chapters. I don't know if this book is divided into chapters. No, not really. But this book is the Portuguese book right here. Chapters. One part I didn't put on here because I didn't think you would like it. But it is, um, we sometimes call it the table of contents table of contents and it's at the beginning of the book and it will show you where all the chapters are table of contents chapters and it might have the page number for where a chapter starts Let's see here look at this. this is a big number two right here this is good so there that is chapter number two in this book. Oh, any Portuguese speakers in here? I don't know what that means. Maybe thank you. Volta? Is that time? A time or something? Probably not, right? Probably not. Maybe you can help me with that. Chapters. Hope that helps with chapters. Now the next one. An ebook. I've shown you traditional books here. But we do have ebooks. You may have heard of this. You can go on a website like Amazon and buy an ebook. Now, usually to read an ebook, you need an e reader. An e reader is what we call, I have one on my phone, apps like. Kindle, app like a Kindle, and you can read an ebook. You could even read it on your phone. So if you use your phone for an ebook, you might need an app like the Kindle, and we would call that an e reader that helps you read ebooks. So my question to you please write it in the chat. Which do you like better? Are you an ebook kind of person or do you like traditional books better? 
We talked about the smell. You can't get a smell from an ebook. Some people might like the smell of books better. New books have a certain smell. Old books have a certain smell. But with the ebook, you can put like a thousand books on your phone. You'll never have to worry about a bookshelf. That's coming up in a minute. Bookshelf. So what do you like better? Ebooks or traditional books? All right, Pachu, ebook, ebook fan. Jeez, I don't know. I have never read Game of Thrones. I would think it's pretty advanced. Anya, somehow I knew you would say traditional books. It has its own soul. I like that. Yeah, you can let people borrow books. They get a little worn. The pages might tear a little bit. That's just love. That's just love for the book. The book has been well loved if it's been read many times. Yes, celebrities write autographs. Stacy prefers reading traditional books. Constantine, traditional books. You know, I, oh, really? Thank you. A round trip, please. I had no clue. Thank you. I prefer, hmm, that's a problem, right? We have no bookstores in nearby areas. Yeah, most of the bookstores, we'll talk about them in a minute, they've closed down. A lot of the traditional bookstores in my area have also closed down. Most of the books that I read are ebooks. They're just easier, but I prefer the traditional books. Maybe you are carrying around your book in the subway. People can see what you're reading. I like traditional books better, but it's more convenient for me to get the ebook usually. That's sad. Uh, both. Apple. Both. I'm a boomer. I'm a boomer too. A boomer. If this is your first time here, you may not know what a boomer is. It's another way to say an older person. So if you look at Constantine and you look at me, you know, we're not quite the age of a boomer. Boomers are usually in their 70s or 80s, but we sometimes call ourselves boomers. You can see the little smile there that Constantine put. Why don't I speak fast? Well, I'm trying to teach people English. So I feel if I go too quickly, some of the words might get lost. But if you're watching this on replay, remember, you can speed up my speech. You can move it up to 1.5 or two times the speed. Danny says, I love both. Traditional books are really great and I love bookshops, but it's so convenient to use eBooks. I agree. I agree. What, what? You can touch it, sense it, even smell the traditional book. I like the sound when I turn the pages. I agree. I agree. Some e-readers have the sound you can make when you turn a page. It's not the same though, right? It's not the same. Not the same. All right, the next one is a bookmark. Bookmark. Now, e-readers, you don't need a bookmark, but for traditional books, you do. Bookmarks hold your place in a book. That's sometimes the term we use when you stop reading and you need to hold your place. You can use a bookmark. And you can see we have bookmarks all over the world. That's what we call it in English. 
So I'm sure you know bookmark in your own language. Uh, yes, yeah, some ebooks you do have to buy. I'm reading an ebook with my students right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I project it on the wall so the students can see the words and I read it to them. That is one of the best ways to learn English is to read. It's one of the best ways. Listen and read at the same time. If you listen to an audiobook and you're reading the text at the same time, it's what we call the lettering. The text at the same time can be really effective. Really effective. Ah, St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. I would love to visit Russia one day. I would love to visit St. Petersburg one day. I've actually spoken to some channel members about visiting St. Petersburg one day. But when I looked, I was looking this morning on travel advisories and it said, Americans, uh, don't go to Russia right now. Wait a little while. But one day, one day I hope to visit St. Petersburg. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. Wait, what? I'm just reading Apple the Frog's comment. And they said, don't show it. Don't show it. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you're in the right place if you want to learn English. Look at that. Yeah. Layla, it is great. I have ebooks for learning Italian, and it is great. There, you can also change the speed. You can move it down a little bit if it's too quick for you or you can move up the speed if you want it to be a little faster. Next one, I hope this is new for everyone. So if you don't want to use a bookmark, you can dog ear a page. And right there, the picture of that page is dog eared. That's what we call it in English. When you fold down the page, to hold your place. That is dog eared. I don't like folding over the pages of my books. I never dog ear the pages. So for some reason, that's just not my style. I will use a bookmark pretty much every time. I don't like ruining the page. Some people like it though. Some people like it. Yeah, most of my books have bookmarks. The next one, bookshelf. Bookshelf. If you have one, it's a bookshelf. If you have two, we do something kind of crazy with the plural. We put a V in there. So if you look down in the bottom, I have a sentence with the plural of bookshelf. Bookshelves are a great place to store your books. Did you know store can be used as a verb? We're going to talk about it as a noun in a minute. But to store something is you put it in a place to keep it safe. So a good place to keep your book safe is a bookshelf. So bookshelves are a great place to store your books. The next one. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. The next one is brick. You're like, wait, what? What brick? That has nothing to do with books. And I would agree with you, but we need to learn what a brick is for the next term, sort of. So there's a brick. Houses can be made of bricks. <laughs> Rio, no. Hey, I've been, uh, my wife and I uh, definitely, definitely want to talk about uh, going to Rio for sure. 
I've been talking with, she's not in the chat right now, I don't think. I've been talking with a, a channel member named Sita. And she has been showing me some pictures of Rio right now. I am very jealous. Rio looks absolutely beautiful. All right. So brick mortar. I don't know if you know that term mortar. So mortar can be like the one on the left and it can be used in war. That's a mortar right there and it's shooting out a missile. But this is the mortar I want to talk about because mortar hold, <coughs> excuse me, holds bricks together. So to make two bricks stick together, you need mortar. And the reason I wanted to teach you those two words is because we have something in English called brick and mortar stores. Brick and mortar stores. This is the opposite. Oh, it looks like Aroni has to leave. See you, man. This is the opposite of something like Amazon. And unfortunately, these are the type of stores that are closing down all around the world because of places like Amazon, but the old fashioned brick and mortar stores, that is just a store you can physically go into. You can go inside. Yes. Yes. It's a physical store. It's a physical store. It's what we call physical stores. <laughs> yes. Construction materials. Yes. So brick and mortar stores. It took me two slides to explain that, but I wanted to make sure everyone knew what mortar is and brick. So, yeah. So we have online stores and then we have brick and mortar stores. Brick and mortar stores. Hopefully that helps. Amazon is the opposite of a brick and mortar store. And I think that is it. That's the lesson. My voice held up. And it was so good to see everyone here. So good. Next week, I think we are going to do movies. So books and movies, they almost go hand in hand. Sometimes books are made into movies and movies are made into books. Most of the time, it's the books that are made into the movies. But every so often, yeah, Game of Thrones, those were originally books. Then they were made into a TV series. So I can't thank you all enough. Thank you. If you liked the video, if you subscribed, Layla and Amina dropped some super chats. I would like to thank them one more time for that. I want to thank you all. It looks like it'll be one more week and we'll be, at, be back together. How about that? Oh, hey, Stranger Things. That was a TV show that was made into a book. Huh, I like Stranger Things. It's good stuff. Movies will be next week. Thank you all for joining. One of my favorite hours of the week. I hope it's one of your favorite hours. I know there are a lot of English teachers you could spend your time with. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Hope you learned a little something. See you next.